Hey y'all, Data Guy here, back with another video on the intersection of Apache Airflow and Apache Kafka. And you know I had to bring the Data Dog with me for this one because he's my little expert. Say hi, Data Dog! Um, and so what we'll be going through in this video today is how you can use an Airflow DAG to produce and consume messages from an Apache Kafka cluster. Um, so this is a really just good framework or if you want to set, use Airflow as the measure to say, hey, you know, I want these data sources to be producing their data into Kafka. I want to assign these consumers and then link that to the other systems within your data pipeline outside of Kafka um, and kind of use Airflow as an interconnective tissue, as I always like to think of Airflow. Um, and so that's what we're going to go into today. Um, and just to give you an idea of what we'll be making here today. Um, so first, we're going to be just giving are producing a pet name and number of treats into our produce to topic operator. So this is where we're going to be taking these topics, producing them into Kafka. And then we are also going to consume the pet owner from um, consume from topic uh, operator. So just going to show you kind of how you can both produce messages to Kafka and then also set up a consumer relationship, pulling messages outside of Kafka um, from those. Producers. So now let's go back to the code view and let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to be doing, as we do with all of our DAGs, is importing some libraries and packages. So for this one, it's pretty simple. We're just going to need the DAG and task decorators, so we can use the task for API for this. Pendulum date time, just because we always use that to use the best in class date time. JSON and random, um, just so we can use a randomizer, just for some of the stuff we're going to be producing here. Um, and then JSON, just so we can pass JSON messages into Kafka. Um, and then here, so these are two critical ones, are the Kafka providers uh, produce and consume. So actually, if I way over to the end here, you can see we have the produce from to topic operator and the consume from topic operator. Um, and these are from two different libraries. So you can't just do the uh, comma. You have to go from the produce library and from the consume library. Voice by Kafka instead of just putting them both under operators. But hey, yes, there's a reason. Um, and so after we've gotten all these done, let's go and set up our variables. And these variables we're going to be using just for kind of passing in and out of um, our Kafka cluster. Um, so here you have just a name, Johnny. Uh, pet name is Nevermore. Um, number of treats, just because I have so many treats, <laughs> give a dog. Um, so you can also up down this. Again, these numbers are just for fun. Um, and the only Kafka topic that you are going to need to change or update is just this my topic. Kafka topic. And that is really it. So now we can start building our DAG. Also, some inner note here is if you're going to use the code link that I'm going to post in the description, um, you don't have to worry about changing any of these. Uh, it is it's going to spin up a local Kafka cluster for you. Um, and it'll use this topic. It's already been pretty. So don't worry too much about this. this but if you are using your own Kafka cluster for this, uh, definitely going to want to change that topic. Um, and so without further ado, let's start creating our first task. So our first uh, task we're going to create here is just a produce function. Um, and so essentially what we're doing here is just creating creating a function that's going to allow us to uh, create messages that can be in the pet's name, randomly generate a number, um, whether it's the last treat in a series. So again, just random information so produce this continuously to that Kafka cluster um, and act as a real producer. Um, so here we just have for i in range, number of treats, um, and a final treat equals false, post mood treat, uh, random choices. So this is again where we use randomizer to say, hey, what's uh, gonna happen here <laughs> um, with the weights? So, you know, hey, if we want my dog, I know he loves uh, when he gets his treats. So we'll double uh, his happy and zany and bouncy. Very first uh, And then we can say, hey, for if i plus one equals number of treats, so whatever total number of treats, um, then it is going to produce a message creating uh, containing our final treat, our pet mood post that final treat, and our pet name. And this is what we're going to be producing into that cockpit cluster. Um, so we've got our first task down, so first producer task. Now let's create consumer task. So our consume function here, uh, this is going to take in a consume messages um, and then print their contents to the log. So this actually define this in a DAG, it'll make a little bit more sense. But essentially all we're doing right here is just saying, hey, uh, I want to take any messages that I was that were brought into Kafka, um, load them, and then print them out. Um, so this is consuming those messages that were produced. Kafka. 
Um, and so those are the only two functions we're going to need to define outside of just using the Kafka uh, provided operators, uh, because this is how we're just kind of mimicking being a consumer or a producer. You know, hey, this one's constantly pulling that pet treat information, and the first one is constantly producing that pet treat information, randomizing it um, for that exact reason. Um, so we've got those functions done. Now let's get into the meat and potatoes of creating our DAG. So here, and sorry to kind of blast you with a wall of code here, is just we're creating a DAG, um, which is just super simple. Uh, start date, schedule, none, catch up, false. Uh, the only thing that's going to be different here is you're going to want to have a render template as native object. Um, just because it makes it work better with Kafka. Um, not too the reason there, but it is it is there. Um, and so then after you've done that, we're gonna create three kind of uh, producer tasks, producer and consumer tasks, just taking those variables and pushing them into um, our Kafka functions. We have get pet name, which is just returning pet name, get number of treats, uh, get pet owner, and just turning those um, to pass them into our producer functions. Um, and so, which you can see, uh, we have number of treats, pet name, so we're just passing there. Um, so after we've got those super basic tasks done, I just kind of skipped through them because they're that interesting. Um, we can actually get started with our produce topic operator. Boom, now we have our first Kafka operator. Um, and so we've taken all the groundwork we've laid and now we're ready to produce some messages into our Kafka cluster. Um, so here with the produce a topic operator, we have our task ID, we have our Kafka connection ID. Um, these are all built into the disk image, but if you're using your own, make sure you update these. Uh, Kafka topic. And then here you have our producer function. So this is where we're taking that, sorry, I called it a task, but a function we produced earlier um, that is going to contain the number of messages creating pets names, uh, randomly pick pet mood post treat, whether or not it was the last treat in a series. What's really cool is that you can actually see within GitHub or not, I think VS Code, it tell you the results of that function. Um, so just AI coming to life in real life. Um, then you also have the uh, producer function arguments. So what this is going to do is actually be pulling an XCOM um, from get number of treats here. Um, so the reason we set this as none is because at the start, we want them to have no treats. Um, and then we're gonna feed them and, and that's how we're producing those messages. Um, and then you can also see the KWARGs we're gonna have here, um, pet names so I can use that um, as an argument across. All um, and finally, pull timeout. So this is just, hey, it says they're succeeding. Uh, and so this basically is the theme status of how you'll be producing uh, data into Kafka. So, you know, in this case, we're using a producer function, which is you know, Python script. You can use other ways to produce. But what this allows you to do is create a function that governs, you know, a, instead of you know, something silly like pet names or like that, it could be a pull from, you know, maybe uh, a data source that contains information on, cu on customer tracking and, you know, their journey through your website. And so you want to be constantly pulling that information while using a function that cleans it and transforms it into a way that's you know human readable rather than just stream interaction data. Um, so just kind of wanted to illustrate some of the ways you can expand this outside of just a silly pet example here. Um, and then the second uh, operator we're gonna be using, so we produce some information to Kafka. So every time um, this Kafka operator runs, it's going to take that information about pet name, treats, run that function that's going to give that pet those treats. And then once that function is done, it's reached to that a certain amount of treats, then it's going to post the final information in that JSON format um, of, hey, this is your pet name, pet mood plus treat, and final treat. Um, and so now I'm going to show you how you can then consume that information downstream. So here next we have the consume from topic operator, consume treats. Um, so here, what we're doing is again, setting a task ID for consume treats, Kafka default, def same Kafka topic, um, and you're going to apply the consume function. Um, and so here, the function kwarg, since we're passing into this, we need to have the name. Um, and it's also going to take, by default, the message that's being passed in that's being read from that Kafka cluster within this topic. Um, so you can see here, we're in this function. Now, every time this consume from topic operator runs, it's going to look at this Kafka topic. Um, it's going to look at 1,000 max messages. So the past 1,000 messages from this Kafka topic um, and look for any of that allow you to get the pet owner name and run that consume on it. Um, so then with the, that consume function, what it's going to do is using that uh, name as the key message. Um, we are going to load that JSON from the message contents. So get that content or that message we just produced, read the information of the pet name, pet mood plus treat, and then print that using Jinja templating into our log file. Um, so what you would really be using this in practice for is saying, hey, I want to listen for uh, these types of customers, customers that, you know, use an example of customer user data. 
Um, I want to look for anyone that has an email that says they're uh, .eu, uh, target EU customers. Uh, so with GDPR, I'm sure that wouldn't be possible. Um, and then say to pull all the information about anyone whose name matches uh, .eu, right? Um, that's how you really use this consumption topic operator in practice. Um, so now that we've gotten a DAG that can produce and consume from Kafka, um, let's set our uh, task mapping just so everything is nice and clean. And then I'll show you what it looks like in Airflow UI. And just to kind of tie it off to show you our bitmapping here. So we're having get pet name and treats in a group leading into produce treats because we want to get both the pet name and number of treats before we run that function. Um, then it's going to go into get pet owner name. Um, which is, as we can see, uh, just another empty function that is then going to pay pass into to, uh, consume treats. To get your pet owner treats from this empty task, uh, well, not empty, but you know, you'll pass into a task um, and then pass that into consume treats to get the name or to get the dog state treat amount um, of your given pet for your pet owner name um, and then produce consume treats all together because you're going to produce that data and then uh, consume. And now that we're all set here, let's pop over to the Airflow UI and see what it looks like in practice. And now here we have it, the final run of the show. So here uh, we have our produce consume treat stack. So I'm gonna run it again. I ran it a little bit before just so I could actually show you the log files. Um, so right now this is finishing up. We have our produce consume treats uh, where we're getting the message from our cluster. Um, Hope it doesn't fail me right now. Um, so you can see here where we're producing this record um, to our my topic partition at offset, you know, zero, one, two, three. Um, so here we have producer DAGs. You can see this producing into our Kafka topic. And then in our consumer DAG, you can see we have our message. Hello, Johnny. Your pet nevermore has consumed another treat and is now bouncy, content, happy, zoomy, and bouncy. Uh, so boom. That's all you need there um, to now get started on your own, producing and consuming tasks from a coffee or messages from a coffee cluster. Sorry, I get my messaging mixed up with all these Apache slaying around here. Um, so I'll drop the code for you down below. It's really just a self start where you can download it and run this yourself and get started um, with Kafka. And I hope you learned something. I learned a ton. Um, and if you have anything you'd like me to cover in a future video, uh, please drop a comment below. Uh, like and subscribe, as I must always ask, and have a good one. Data guy out.